Hi there, welcome to IoT World Today. I'm Sean Suzuki, Senior Producer at Informa Tech, and today we will be talking about some of the security challenges that are currently being faced in the IoT and healthcare space. As COVID-19 has had an impact on all industries, it's been interesting to see the long-term impact on the healthcare industry and the focus on innovation whilst adapting to the new normal. I'm here today with Seth Fogey, Information Security Director at Penn Medicine. Thank you for joining us today, Seth. Yep, thanks for having me, glad to speak on this. Great. Uh, so Seth will be speaking on a panel at our upcoming virtual um, IoT Security Summit on December 1st to 3rd. The panel will be discussing how to mitigate and manage risk with IoT and securing your device. This will cover topics ranging from the visibility of IoT devices, tackling security breaches for systems and data, to securing your network. So Seth, as we've seen over the past few years, specifically within the security market, IoT seems like a very complex world. You know, there's so many different types of IoT out there and each seems to have their own unique challenges. So can you provide a few examples of this world and the issues that you've seen? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, like you said, IoT is a really complex world because it covers a, a really broad range of, of users and businesses and functions. Um, it it kind of can break it down into kind of three or four different areas being consumer and enterprise, which can also be, you know, leverage into the or work, work into the, the corporate healthcare and whatever other specific niche the, the corporate role might play, as well as um, industrial too. Um, and with, within those, you, know, you can kind of see the, the differences just with some examples. So I, I like to use examples because it really kind of brings it home for people. Um, consumer facing, uh, your, your standard smartphone will, if I can show up there on the screen, your standard smartphone uh, offers all kinds of capabilities, but it's ultimately an internet of things in many ways, and it interfaces with a lot of different technologies on the back end. One particular case I've seen on a smartphone, especially uh, within the healthcare, but it bleeds in the consumer world because consumers are ultimately the ones that um, can end up being uh, impacted by security vulnerabilities on these types of applications that, that are, reside on the smartphone. Uh, one example is a, an app that, that uh, used by students. Students are a unique group of people because they're kind of more transient in nature. They, they move from place to place and they may end up being part of two or three different healthcare systems. So this app is designed to pull all these healthcare systems together and provide one portal that, that the student can work inside and see the different healthcare systems they work with. Um, as part of that, the app tries to bridge that, uh, that authentication process into the, the, the My Health portal, whatever it might be called. So it makes it easy for the student, but when the student, then the student has to enter their credentials for each of those portals, and this app takes those credentials and stores them. Again, and now when we're dealing with what do we do with those credentials, those credentials are important and this app is being responsible for those credentials. As it turns out, after looking at it, the app is storing the credentials in plain text within their environment. So now we have a you know, IoT suite solution that's running on an app that ties into a backend system that is putting that student effectively at risk because of the way it's storing those credentials and that's a plain text. If that site gets compromised, all those credentials get compromised. And from you know, my healthcare perspective, who's gonna end up suffering the reputation impact on that? It probably won't be that company, it won't be the student that'll probably end up coming back to the healthcare organization. Mm -hmm. So uh, likewise, you know, when we talk about just pure enterprise environments, uh, it, with, I've seen a couple different examples and this one bleeds into the, um, the, the patient as well in that we have patient entertainment systems. Uh, in some of the research we've, we've done, I, I've seen two different patient entertainment systems and I'll speak on one of them right now. Um, this one's kind of a little bit funny in a way, except for the fact of the seriousness behind it. But uh, I had a, one of my staff members was having a baby and they were in the hospital. And, um, you know, what else is a security minded person going to do in the hospital and waiting for delivery? But look at the patient entertainment system. Um, now, uh, they started looking. They noticed that, you know, they, they pulled out their phone. Their phone was meant to be an interface into the, the patient entertainment system so they could use their phone as a remote. It's hygienic, it's personal, it keeps things nice and close to them. The IoT device that they're interacting with though, needed to find some way to connect to the phone. So the phone, when you connect to the URL that it gives you, it TV shows you a five digit pin you enter into your phone, and now you can use your phone as a remote. The problem was, you know, this, this team member of mine contacted me and said, hey, can you go to this URL and enter this five digit pin? And I went, I'm kind of curious if your phone can be the remote for this TV. So I did that. I went to the publicly available website, put in a 
five digit pin, it's only five numbers, and was able to control his IoT TV from the internet. And ironically, I was at physical therapy because I hurt my shoulder and all while doing this, you know, it was very simple and quick to do, not complex. So if you think about that, it's only a five digit pin. How long does it take to scan a five digit pin range and find other open devices? And I can confirm that his device was definitely open on the internet and could be found that way too. So now we have an IoT device inside of a patient room that can be remotely controlled, including the internet, by somebody out on the internet, by some random person out on the internet. So, uh, you know, that's just one example of like the, what the enterprise is facing is we got these IoT devices in our environment that, that we don't always know what and how they are put together, but in this case, it, it, it represents a concern for the patient. And last, the last one I'll talk about is, is the, the IoT world can have a broader impact than I think some people realize, uh, in particular like an HVAC system. Now people think, oh, well, if the HVAC system goes down, it's not a big deal. It just takes down the air conditioning. It's, it's a few moments of you know, uncomfortableness. I might be a little bit hot or cold or whatever. But in, it, it, these HVAC systems have some real world um, impacts. Uh, if an HVAC system goes out in a healthcare organization, and I've seen this happen, um, it can have a drastic impact on the humidity of the environment and, and in any kind of environment. But in healthcare in particular, if it happens, there are so many different types of um, materials and stuff that are part of the, especially when you talk about surgery, um, you got pads and you have sterile equipment, you have all these other things that need to be kept the very climate control conditions because if humidity comes in, it will, it will ruin all that stuff. And it has to be much just run away because it's considered unsterile at that point. Um, so yeah, I mean, those are just three different examples of, of I, I probably have like, 10 to 15 that I've found within the organization myself um, that can have just a real world impact of, of all these IoT security challenges. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it can really happen kind of anywhere. Um, and yeah, it seems like there's kind of a lot of different types of technology in place. Um, mm -hmm. So for these different types of technologies, how does your team work to kind of protect this all? Uh, so that is a big challenge for any healthcare team. Um, with the, just in the three examples I gave there, you, you have web app security, you have mobile device security, you have uh, um, what HVAC system specific security, some of the protocols that are used there. You also have an understanding of networks, you have an understanding of the internet. So there's a lot of different uh, skill sets that need to be kept up to speed and not to mention all the new technologies that are thrown in. So, I mean, you've got Kubernetes, you've got Docker that's now everywhere. Um, it, it is a challenge for teams to stay aware of that. So at Penn Medicine in particular, uh, we put a pretty heavy focus and a, a kind of a conscious focus on making sure that the team stays up to speed through, and in our team, we do it through these things called Penn test challenges, you know, pun intended with the, the Penn test there. Um, and every two weeks or so, we will uh, formally sit down as a team and work through some pen test challenge where, I mean, it can be a, a SANS, there's a lot of things that SANS offers, especially over this last summer or, you know, the hack holiday events. Um, there's also many other capture the flag type things. We also have people in the team that will build capture the flag uh, environments using some of the tools like Docker in particular. Um, and we'll stand up these for the team and we'll work through them as a challenge and create a slightly competitive, but also a great learning experience for, for the team. Um, that we actually submitted that, that we, we've been doing it for a little while, but we submitted the idea to the CSO 50 awards. Um, and we actually won based on the, it seemed to be something that not a lot of teams do and make a focus on, but I know for a fact that it's made a difference for, for the team and just keeping them aware of some of the technologies that are used. And have you even seen uh, some of the things we worked on, we had one situation, it was a really rare kind of bug. It was a uh, pickle serialization. And go look it up if you want to learn more about it. But um, it was a bug we actually found two weeks later in one of our applications that we then worked to get remediated. So it does even help in those situations too. Wow, that's great. Yeah, and congratulations. That's a great achievement. Um, so yeah, what could um, IoT vendors be doing to you know, get ahead of these specific types of bugs um, before they're exploited or found by, you know, the hackers and the bad guys. So this is, this is a tough one for IoT vendors because a lot of their products and solutions are, are more physical or tangible in nature. Um, but 
If there is, number one, standards are important. Um, aligning the standards, making sure that, that they at least meet a common bar of criteria. Uh, for example, you know, I've seen California law has put into place that you can't have default passwords anymore. And that's just one of those things that you find over and over and over again in a lot of these IoT devices. And the, you know, been the, the source of, uh, of why things, you know, why botnets have some, you know, some botnets have been stood up that have done denial of service attacks. So aligning the standards is important, but um, finding ways to get these devices tested, whether they are, uh, you know, tested and validated you know, in, I know there's companies out there that do IoT security testing that can put their stamp of approval on it. Um, or alternately, um, finding some way of doing some sort of like bug bounty type of environment um, or, or, or scenario. I, I like the bug bounty uh, option myself. You know, if I learn that the product uh, you know, is doing bug bounties, it gives me a little bit sense of a understanding that their product's getting tested by real world people looking for real world bugs that are definitely scouring the entire device. And, you know, cause there's, there's incentive in it for the, the people that are looking for those bugs and it, it raises the bar a little bit. Uh, just some ideas. I know the bug bounty one might be a little bit more on the, the fringe edge. It hasn't quite hit mainstream, but um, uh, you know, getting more real world look by more by security professionals at the devices before they go to, before they go out the door. Great. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, thanks so much um, for kind of your insights. And um, yeah, it's great to hear some of the initiatives that you're doing to kind of um, improve the security market and the threats that are um, coming up, you know, um, as IoT becomes more of a important part of every industry. Um, but yeah, thanks so much, Seth, again, for taking the time to join today. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, um, and for our users, um, please feel free to check out IoT World Today for more of these types of topics. And for the IoT security event, you can register um, in December, um, and the link will be under this video. But yeah, thanks so much, Seth, and it was great to speak. Me too, thanks.